when it comes to passages. On the surface, it can seem like it's all about this narcissistic man who's trying to have his cake and eat it too. But the deeper it goes, the more you see how relationships were long troubled way before social media and app dating. To summarize the film, Thomas, why am I saying his name like that? Thomas is a film director who is married to Martin, who isn't a creative like him and either doesn't want to or can't keep up with Martin, with Thomas's partying and his lifestyle, at least to the degree that Thomas has after completing a film. This allows a woman named Agatha, I guess. I forgot how to say her name already. It allows the young woman to enter Thomas's life and with her being willing to party and engage with him, he gets quite taken by her. And even though it seems Thomas has lived most of his life as a gay man, even to the point of marrying a man, something about this woman leads to him having feelings that he feels the need to act on and thus he starts an affair. Now he's very open about this affair with Martin and this leads to a situation where Thomas, who's trying to keep both, acting almost like a pendulum as one person gets angry he gets goes to the other and him trying to use all the charm that he has in order to keep both. So the highlight when it comes to this film is just how it shows the different relationship dynamics between Thomas, Martin, and Agatha, Agatha. Her name is spelled A-G-A-T-H-E, but they're French, so not really sure on how to pronounce it, even I just saw the movie a few days ago. But that aside, originally, when it comes to Thomas, it's, it's not really clear what's going on with him. Is he, with him getting to his mid to late 30s, starting to have some quarter life crisis where he's potentially lived his life as a gay man but now with having this interest in his woman is he now confused is it that he's truly a narcissist or maybe somebody who craves attention constantly or even somebody who doesn't know how to be in a relationship with confrontation hence him going to something new something fun something fresh and him trying to develop something there and then ultimately going back to mind when that gets hard it's very difficult to say, but I should know, Martin and I hate calling her the woman since that sounds still so dis disrespectful not saying her name, but I can't remember how to pronounce her name, but either way, he keeps going back and forth to Martin and Agatha, Agatha, and it's very much clear that those two aren't just waiting for him to make a decision. They're living their lives, and at the same time, the way they live their lives is also very intriguing. Because, let's be very clear, Martin is not painted to be the type of character who can't get another man. Never mind who's dependent on Thomas whatsoever. Yes, you can definitely see that Martin is very much attracted to Thomas's chaos in a way, since maybe Martin is used to having a very mundane type of life, so that's why he keeps allowing that chaos to keep coming back and forth. But at the same time, you can also see there's this desire to have like some kind of boundary up. But I don't want to compare it to time, not to time wasted. I don't want to com compare it to our son where there's this feeling of potentially wasting time because that's not really brought up when it comes to Thomas and also Mom's relationship. But you can definitely see that there is a sort of comfort in knowing the person compared to what's new and out there that is allowing for this back and forth and it gives you this very interesting take on a relationship that is homosexual but at the same time it's not really focused on it being two men but it's rather focused on being two people in what essentially is a toxic relationship and then when it comes to Agatha Agatha one of those two, probably not. She also isn't someone who's just there to be a catalyst for Thomas's sexual exploration. She pushes the idea that Thomas doesn't have this overwhelming charm and he can bag anybody. What she does is help you understand that as charming as Thomas can be in the honeymoon phase, he's someone who doesn't truly know how to be in a full-blown relationship. And perhaps the best scene that kind of shows that off is that when Thomas meets her parents and he's pressed on, you know, 
his past, his sexuality and everything, you can tell that when it comes to something beyond being funny, having sex, or some type of intimacy that's fulfilling for him, he falls apart. That charm disintegrates if you get too personal and it is an attack in his mind if you question or criticize him. And I would say as she kind of chisels him apart, it makes it clear he's flawed in ways that, you know, he can't compensate for. I think both in terms of heterosexual relationships when it comes to the women who's trying to give a guy a chance and probably for homosexual relationships as well, you get a real sense of what it means to try to put aside initial impressions because someone seems to be trying, they seem nice or charming, and you ignore all the big red flags and ultimately it bites you in the ass. The last topic for this and also a highlight is that the sex scenes when it comes to passages seem to, seem like they're more so for the character's pleasure than it is for the viewer's pleasure. To begin on that topic, it's really not that hard to find intimate sex scenes. And I'm talking even outside of porn. Gaspar No has love, which has graphic and intense sex scenes. And also in the actresses, the lead actresses, past movie Blue is a Woman's Color, there is a very long lesbian sex scene. But the best sex scenes to me are the ones where it feels like it's not about you. It's not about having a perfect shot of an actor so you can see the curve of their backside, some glimpse of their endowment, their abs, just some type of exploitation of that person in order to give into some type of fantasy that the viewer may have. Instead, the best ones are where it's not about you, the camera angle's imperfect, and instead you're pushed to be some type of creepy voyeur while you're sneaking a peek at a very intimate moment. And I think with the way that sex is filmed in passages, where you see people's fingers probing and actors completely in a moment which, if you didn't know better, you would think there was actual penetrative sex happening, it allows you to understand that sex scenes as much as they kind of feel more and more common, it's not supposed to be something that is meant just as a sex sells thing, but it's supposed to show you that these two characters have truly tuned out the world and are just focused on pleasure, connection, and showing this person that they have an affection for them that even if it's just for that time period is exclusive. Overall, when it comes to passages, I won't say that it sets any precedence or even is necessarily worth visiting, but I do think it's a kind of film that could be remembered fondly in a way and worth referencing in terms of the complexity of its relationships, how it doesn't harp on Thomas's journey, even though he's focusing both on a man and a woman. And I would even say in terms of the way it filmed its sex scenes, that's also something that might be worth adding to the Gaspar Knows Love or Blue is the Warmest Color in terms of showing a sex scene that clearly was filmed with the eventual intention of showing an audience, but doesn't necessarily feel like it's purely about what the audience may get out of this or even get off when it comes to it.